Professor Edward Keane this morning. And our next uh, questioner is Senator Max Sherry. Senator Max Sherry. Thanks very much, Chairman, and uh, welcome, Professor, and thank you for, for making the journey to, to, to help us out. Um, in a paper that you wrote in 2006, I think it was entitled Inadequacy of Nation-Based and Value-at-Risk-Based Safety Nets in the European Union, um, you talked about the EU's financial safety net, uh, and you suggested that if confronted with one or more large bank insolvency, nationalistic pressures on home and host regulators uh, are bound to aggravate weaknesses in accounting reports and to prevent the losses embedded in deeply troubled institutions from being allocated quickly, efficiently, or fairly across member states involved. That was in 2006 and quite insightful. Uh, can you tell us, uh, with the benefit of hindsight, is this an indictment of uh, the EMU and its uh, fitness for purpose in a crisis? Well, it's certainly an, <clears throat> an indictment of the failure to uh, completely design the system. That is, um, the ability, say, of the European Central Bank to um, absorb losses is limited by the ability to recapitalize itself from the member states. And the fact that they never have established a formal loss allocation mechanism and are just winging it is, is, is part of the problem. Uh, so <clears throat> that it took the United States a long time before we had a federal deposit insurance corporation. Um, and uh, I think that the aspirations of European <coughs> unity have run ahead of the institutions that are supposed to support and embody it, and that uh, this is just one example of that. But I appreciate your quoting that, and I, it, I, I think of it less as, uh, well, it is, it's a matter of insight of the analysis. It wasn't so much a forecast. It just had to be that way, that you, if you do things incompletely, then you have to unravel problems in, a, in an ad hoc way. So just to, to follow on from that then, and while I appreciate um, your, your limited knowledge of the specific domestic situation here, um, considering the nature of the EMU and, and your writings and research of 2006 specific to uh, the preparedness or readiness or indeed lack of it for a, a banking crisis, uh, for a small open economy like Ireland, um, was it possible to prevent or adequately navigate the crisis once it hit in 2008, considering what you wrote uh, and, uh, of the circumstances? Well, so for, first of all, if, instead of uh, other states coming to the rescue, um, Ireland seemed to have been forced to help creditors in these other lands, like Germany. Um, I don't think that would have been the way you would design for a crisis in a small country. Of course, Greece is the uh, absolute poster child for all this. Uh, I think Ireland uh, showed a lot of gumption in handling this situation for itself. I think um, they should have worked a harder deal with the rest of Europe, but they were not in a position to dictate terms, I guess. Would you think that's because of our small size? It's yes. less than 1% of the Eurozone? Yes. Interesting. In terms of uh, the uh, regulatory situation uh, throughout the world, uh, just for a bit of background on the Irish system, that uh, post-2003 we had a, a regulator and a central bank uh, that were separate uh, but connected. Uh, is this model flawed, do you think? And uh, uh, are central banks and regulators best placed to be working together uh, on uh, the same mission uh, with shared information? Uh, I think it's very dangerous to have the prudential regulation in the central bank because the central bank is, is pushed in a lot of directions in terms of inflation and unemployment. And I think, as I say, the regulator should be thought of as running a trust fund 
uh, for the equity um, position of taxpayers. And I think this can be done as a single-minded goal, <coughs> and it, it, central banks will never do it as a single-minded goal. And it would be hard enough even to get the regulator to do it. That's why I think involving private trustees also is, is, as a co-trustees would be uh, advantageous. Does, uh, and I think I know your answer to this, but I just want to ask it finally, um, in terms of, of international cooperation on banking regulation, or um, you talked of established norms, uh, does it remain uh, completely unfit for purpose? Well, completely unfit is uh, uh, very strong. But um, as of where we are today, I think um, the, the cross-country um, contracts, if you want to think of them as contracts, are very incomplete. And uh, you can really see this in another area of um, the swaps regulation. This is where it stands at the most. Every country <coughs> that has important swaps markets wants to do whatever it wants to do. And it wants the other countries to recognize their regulatory authority over <coughs> the nationals of the foreign countries trading in, in their um, venue or trading on their platforms. And the dangers of this, especially for uh, countries like the United States, is that uh, the United States will end up having to cover losses uh, incurred in other markets. This was what happened with England. In, you know, the, this firm I mentioned, AIG, the American Insurance Group, the losses surfaced in trading in England by a French uh, subsidiary of this firm. And this little subsidiary created these, uh, a, a large portion of its losses. So um, we are so far from uh, having arranged the you know, what I would call an adequate or complete contracting of uh, <clears throat> who will do what in a crisis in um, across countries. Uh, that is, it is frightening as to what could occur. Uh, I sometimes use a cartoon uh, that shows uh, the ECB, uh, Germany, uh, say, uh, on hell, um, the, the um, Merkin. Yeah, and, and yes, Merkin, and uh, the IMF throwing money at first the the Greek uh, somebody in a Greek toga, then behind that the hands of five other countries that are in trouble, including Ireland, asking, trying to get some of the dollars, and then uh, the IMF is just turning around to Uncle Sam and says, "You realize if this doesn't work, uh, we're going to be calling on you." <laughs> And I think that is the way the system is, is established. Thank you very okay. much, Senator. Thanks, Sherry.